Okay, this is the last Sunday in February, and we're going to have a little study today. And I'm going to show you another infallible proof that this book, the King James Bible, is the pure, perfect, infallible Word of God. And we're going to call this, Do New Creatures Live in the Present or the Past? Do New Creatures Live in the Present or the Past? Well, for those that haven't heard, Billy Graham died this week. He was 99 years old. He's all over the internet. He's being praised. He's being. I'm a big fan of Billy Graham. We all are. Who is it? Bro? Who is it? Who is it? used to take me. They called it the Crusades. And that was, a, that was the Crusades. It was a beautiful thing, but Billy Graham was amazing. I Is he 98 today? 98 years old, Billy Graham. Oh, thank you, sissy. Really great. Say hello to your family. Billy Graham is 98 years old. This is an amazing, truly one of the great, great men. Praised by, by everyone, by, by sodomite groups, by, by, by uh, old presidents of America, Obama, everybody. Everybody's praising this man. Um, but uh, he certainly is the best in the world at what he does and uh, Mr. Billy Graham praising him and all groups of speak all groups of people are speaking well of him Groups of people speaking well of him? Well, in 1982, Billy said with his own mouth, and I can show you videos of that, <clears throat> that his beliefs are the exact same as the Roman Catholics. So the same do, do you remember the worst sin you ever committed? Uh, every sin is the same in God's sight. I mean, there is no such thing as a worse sin. Oh, really? I mean, if you wanted to find out which sin was the greatest, uh, I would choose, if I were forced to choose, mm -hmm. I would say idolatry. Same as the Roman Catholics. And he sent Catholics, when, when he had these big tent crusades and that in all these cities, he would always send Catholics back to their own church. Once they were supposedly came up to the altar and were saved, he sent them back to his own, their own church. The Catholic Church had his crusades. He also praised the Pope. He blessed the Pope five, on five separate occasions. A 
On one occasion, he spent five days in dialogue with the Pope and then agreed with the Pope that, that their religions were the same and one. So this is a very dangerous man, Billy Graham. And uh, Billy also stated that Pope John Paul is in heaven. And he said that with his own mouth. I can show you a video on that. He Stated that he believes Pope John Paul II is in heaven. Now Benny Hinn made a prophecy in 1989 that the greatest revival on earth would happen the moment Billy Graham died. God is going to have the church of his dreams. All the institutionalizing we've done to the church, all the things we've done to try to make it our thing instead of God's thing, God has had the church under wraps for 2,000 years. And may I, may I add, the sign will be Billy Graham's death. Wow. No, no, I'm being raw here. Wow. You are talking about a people in hiding, just like Elijah was a hiding in Cherith. Right. right. But when he came out, he challenged the prophet Exactly. Yeah. We're right into the courts. Right there. And the Lord's the same spirits. Oh, exactly. Those are the same principalities. And the Lord right. said to me in 89. Sorry, yeah, 89. He said, when Otto Roberts and Billy Graham go home, will be the key, wow. it'll be the sign of the beginning of the greatest revival on earth. Wow. Oro is home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Billy is about to go home. Yeah. And when he does, I'm telling the whole church, get ready. <laughs> Paul, can we go there? Yes. 1989, Benny did this. Now, I've heard many times when Billy contradicted the gospel. I mean, I mean, he'd go and he'd do these crusades. Lots of people would get saved, but he contradicted the, the gospel with what he was preaching. He spoke very highly of the Pope. He promoted unity with the Catholic Church. This is exactly what Kenneth Copeland and all these prosperity preachers are doing today. And they've all joined the Catholic Church, by the way. He denied hell. Billy Graham denied hell. Here we have a quote from Billy Graham in which he lies about hell. He says, The only thing I could say for sure is that hell means separation from God. We are separated from his light, from his fellowship. That is going to be hell. When it comes to a literal fire, I don't preach it because I'm not sure about it. When the scripture uses fire concerning hell, that is possibly an illustration of how terrible it's going to be. Not fire, but something worse, a thirst for God that cannot be quenched. Take a look at Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The Bible is very clear in this verse that those in hell are being tormented in the presence of of Jesus Christ. So if hell is not separation from God, what is hell? Second Thessalonians says, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. The everlasting destruction of hell comes from the presence of God. The flaming fire comes from the glory of his power. Mark chapter 9, starting at verse 43, says, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, 
and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Can you imagine? Jesus preached more in hell than anything else when he was on earth. Billy Graham denied hell. And he said there was more than one way to heaven. Yeah, on a Larry King show. But what about those faiths, the Mormons and the others that you mentioned, believe in Christ. They believe they will meet Christ. What about those like the Jews, the Muslims, who don't believe as That's you believe? That's in God's hands. I can't be the judge. You don't judge them? No. No, I How do you feel you're when... going to hell. And you... well, I don't... How do... He sat there and said there's more than one way to heaven. No, Jesus is the way. This is the way. This book is the way. I heard him say it myself also on, at, on the our Robert Schuller show. On Robert Schuller, he said, nope, there's more than one way to heaven. The Muslims go, everybody goes. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world, uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have and they turn to the only light that they have and I think that they are saved and that they're going to be with us in heaven. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. There definitely... So we're supposed to hate every false way. And I'll show you that in the book of Psalms. Now, Billy Graham had false ways. He had other ways to get to heaven. He had false ways. That's in Psalm 119. If you go to Psalm 119, you'll see that. show you who Billy really was here. I'm not denying that some people could have gone to his crusades, been sincerely saved, and let the Holy Ghost lead them to the truth, this book. I'm not denying that. But let's see who Billy Graham was. Psalm 119. And you got to know this because you're going to see all week this week, all over the internet, it's going to be everyone, they're going to have two big showings of Billy's body. And people are going to be wheeling, wailing and weeping. You're going to see lots of guys with collars there. Lots of guys with collars. Watch for that. Psalm 119. 128. Therefore... I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Billy Graham is a false prophet. I hate every false way. And then we're going to go to the book of John. Let's confirm this. Let's go to the New Testament. Go to the book of John 14. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, 14. Verse 6. Now, Billy said there's more than one way to heaven, right? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's John uh, 14, 6. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus said this. These are his words, the, the red letter words. No one cometh to Billy Father to me. According to Billy Graham, well, there's many ways to heaven. Everyone's going to find their way there. He inferred that at least, at the very least. I, I, you know, I'll show you that video clip one day. I'll send you a link. Or I'll put it in the bottom here. Now, uh, Luke uh, 6, 26. Now, you've really got to look at this verse. Because everybody... Everybody is uh, speaking well of Billy, right? 
Everybody, all the presidents, all the way to the top. Speaking about bully, Luke 6. Go to the book of Luke 6. Luke 6. You've got to see this verse. Then you know what you had there. Oh, by the way, Billy also promoted the day of prayer. He really pushed the day of prayer, the world day of prayer. Well, all the religions pray to God. Which God? The God of the world. The God of the world. You don't go to a world day of prayer and pray with other faiths. What fellowship has Christ with Belial? And uh, Luke 6, 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Right there. Jesus just said that Billy was a false prophet. Based on, based on this alone, never mind the things that come out of Billy's mouth. So Satan doesn't want you to know that you're eternally secure. He doesn't want you to know you're eternally secure believing every word of this book. Satan doesn't want you to know that. And I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you today how he does that. He wants to take you away from reading this book by getting you to the easy to read Bible versions. You ever hear that? Oh, the King James Bible, the English is too old, it's too hard to read. He's gonna get you into the easy to read Bible version and he's duped 99% of the Christians already, 99%. I'd say at least 90 to 99%. And what there is no presently perfect word in the new Bible version. And today we're gonna, we're gonna study that a bit. There's no presently perfect word. No presently perfect, period, in the New Bible versions. So are you crucified with Christ? Or have you just been crucified with Christ? You see the difference? In the King James Bible, you are, you are crucified with Christ. In the New Bible versions, you have been crucified with Christ. Well, what's the big deal? So does something uh, you did in the past continue today? According to the New Bible versions, it doesn't. It's not, it, like if you got married... And you're still married today. It's still continuing, right? Okay. Then we speak in present tense. Like we're a family. Tomorrow we're going to be a family too. It doesn't matter even if one of us dies. We're still family. Tomorrow we're going to be a family too. Even if we don't speak to each other anymore. You quit, spe quit speaking to each other. We're still family. We're still family. We might be living in different parts of the world. We're still family. We're present, presently perfect. We're still family. So, we can never say we have been a family. We can never say we have been, a, even, if, even if one of us deceases. We are family. Mother, daughter, son, father, we're family. And let me just show you what I mean by presently perfect. Because you're probably not going to find a, a, a teaching like this on the, on the internet. Presently perfect, we we'll go back to Genesis 3. Go back to, and now I taught this in Calvary Baptist Church. I don't know if anybody caught it, but Genesis 3.1. Go to Genesis 3.1. So you know exactly what I'm talking about by presently perfect. Go to Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now look at the very beginning of that verse. Now the serpent was so more, you see? Presently perfect. It's speaking to us right now. Presently perfect. This is the perfect pure word of God. Says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said. You hear that? Yea, hath God said. Your brother of Bible would get caught up in that. And it goes on to say, You shall not eat of every fruit, uh, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. That's a question. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. She said. You see that she added to God's word. This is the first change. 
Now go to Genesis 3.13. Go down to verse 13. And you're going to see something else here. And now the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Has anyone you love allowed the new Bible versions to beguile them? I know many, and friends too, friends and family. I know many, including most churches we went to in the past. They're all slipping in the new Bible versions. They're beguiled. The serpent beguiled them. Galatians 2.20. We'll go to Galatians 2.20, and I'll show you another perfect example here. Galatians 2.20. Let's, let's get out of the Old Testament. We'll go in the New Testament and show you what I'm talking about. Galatians 2.20. I am, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. By the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So when was Christ crucified? 2,000 years ago. But what does it say at the beginning? I am crucified. This is presently perfect. It's pre the other Bibles don't have this. This is presently perfect. When you get saved and born again, you are crucified with Christ. But you still are crucified with Christ, right? You still believe. You still are crucified with Christ. You have assurance from this book that you are crucified with Christ. That, that you're, you're, you're truly saved. Yes. Now, ver new versions take this away from you. They all take it away from you. Let's, I'm just going to read you from the NSB because we don't have NASBs in front of us. Oh, by the way, the NASB is from the Codex Sinaiticus, which is now proven a forgery. This, this Endorf, he, he, uh, he forged the thing and took out a bunch of scriptures. You can see how he erased them on the actual document. I can show you images of that one day. Now, yet the NASB users, and we have lots of family, and lots of family going to, well, some family going to seminary, and they're using the NSB, they all say it's from the oldest and best manuscripts. But they're talking about the Codex Sinaiticus. The Codex Sinaiticus is a forgery. It's a forgery that, that Tissendorf did for the, 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 one of the Russian uh, leaders to impress him. So who says? Who says it's from the oldest and best manuscripts? We know the oldest, oldest and best manuscripts are forgeries now. So the NASB Galatians 2.20, let's see what it says. Remember the King James says, I am crucified with Christ. The NESB says, I have been crucified with Christ. And then it goes on with the rest of the verse. Let's go to the NIV. I have been crucified with Christ. The New King James Bible. I have been crucified. We went to a New King James church for almost a year. We've only been crucified with Christ. Set, it's a setup, and I'm going to show you later in the study, it's all a setup. It's all a setup from Satan himself. He wrote these books. Now, only the King James Bible is presently perfect. Only the King James Bible. The rest aren't. None of the rest are. And we'll go through a couple more examples here. So somebody doesn't want you to have the perfect, pure word of God, knowing with assurance that you are saved, believing every word of him. Every word of him. Now, who wouldn't want you to know that you're saved? Who wouldn't want you to know that? Can anybody guess? Who wouldn't want you to know you're saved? Well, the devil, of course. The devil, I don't need to tell you that. You can figure it out. Satan, Satan doesn't want you to know. His footprints are all over these new, new, new Bibles. His footprints are all over them. So we are crucified with Christ. Not you have been crucified with Christ. Now, if we go to Galatians 5.4, since we're in Galatians, let's go to Galatians 5.4. We're going to see it again here. Galatians 5.4. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Remember we talked about tithing, being under the law? Of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. What did that say? Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Now let's look at the NASB, what it says. It says, uh, seeking to be. Seeking to be? 
No, you're not. It's not you are seeking to be. So you're seeking to be justified. God said you are. Ju if you are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. You're not saved. You're not saved. So you, you start tithing and doing all these things. Pastors ask you to. The scripture says you're not saved. They're fooling you. They're deceiving you. The NIV says attempting to be, attempting to be justified by the law. So why, why try to justify justify things under the law like tithing and bapti water baptism and all? It's all under the law for the Jews. It's all under the law for the Jews. Don't try and justify it. Okay, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 9 now. Just this back a couple of pages. Back a couple of pages from where you were. Is, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Are we any of those? If you're not saved, you are. You're all of those. You're going to fit into one of those groups for sure. Now look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. This is very, very, this is going to just open everything up here for, 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 for this presently perfect. And such were some of you. You see, we're not anymore. Once you're saved, you're not those things anymore. You still might sin. You still might do some of those things. But such were some of, of you. Such were some of you. But ye are washed. See, ye are presently perfect. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. He's, he, he's our mediator. He, he's our lawyer. He's our advocator. Yet washed in his blood. What does the NASB say?
and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.